What's up, everyone? Mark Lobliner with Bro. Rocking with muscle and strength in Lexington, South Carolina. Where's Lexington? It's somewhere near Columbia. It's my backyard. It is his backyard, two and a half hours from your backyard. He has a really large backyard. Anyway, enough about the Carolinas. Let's talk about what we're training. We are training, this is day two of the split. This is upper body strength. Now, we're focusing on hypertrophy. Okay, we like strength and we're going to tell you how to increase the weight as you get stronger. But what we're looking at here is you utilizing principles to build, well, big, lean muscle. Yes. It's not a body, it's not a power lifting style workout. We're going to be working between 6 and 12 reps, and that's a rep range that's going to recruit the most type 1 and type 2 muscle fibers to influence growth. Exactly. And what we're going to do now, you're going to ask this later. Let's say you're like, okay. I got, when do I increase the weight? How do I know? You start out with a weight you get about six to eight reps with. You get your six to eight reps. Do you go beyond failure? No. You go right up to failure. Don't go beyond failure, don't go past failure. One to two reps short of failure. Yes. One to two reps short of failure, exactly. And once you can get 12 reps with that weight, you increase the weight by, I'd say, 20%. So let's say you're doing 135, increase about 155, 165, somewhere in there. Would you agree with that? Somewhere in that range? I'll throw 10 pounds on the bar. That's the easiest way. Throw 10 pounds on the bar. Yeah. And then get the reps till you get 12 reps again. And then raise the weight so you get at least 6 reps. That's how you increase the weight. So what we're going to do today, we do full upper body workout. I'm ready to go. Are you ready to go? Hell yeah. All right, let's roll. Because, well, upper body training. Full upper body, it's not a game. Starting off, incline bench press. 6 to 12 reps, 3 sets. What you want to do? Get your position. A little bit of the shoulder width. Don't want your elbows flaring all over the place. You want them tucked in. Up. The one thing about incline, you don't have to come all the way down to your chest. Depending upon your structure, you might want to stop two or three inches short. You just want full range of motion. Generally with taller guys, you'll notice that they're not able to come all the way down and do their long limbs. So that's where, like, even my brother, he stops right in here. He's 6'1". Me, I'm 5'6". I come straight through my chest. Wouldn't make a difference. So here's my set, 315. I'm going to get this 6 to 12 reps. This is heavy for me. I'm coming back from an injury, so 315 is what I'm doing. But to warm up, I started with one plate on each side. That's 135, then two plates. And my working set's going to be three plates. The reps I did with one plate, I only did six to eight reps, even though I could have done more because it was a warm-up. It wasn't a working set. So don't go even close to failure. Use your warm-ups as warm-ups. And if you feel you need some extra warm-up sets, feel free to take them. So... Here we go. Push. The dip is called the squat of the upper body and for good reason. It pretty much brings everything into play in the upper body, including your chest, your triceps, and all that good stuff. Now we're going to do it weighted. We have a belt here, but just show you proper dip form for, for chest. You want to lean a bit forward, come down about 90 degrees, come up. Come down, nice and controlled. Keep your elbows nice and tucked in. And again, just like bench, keep this in the six to 12 rep range. Lateral raises. Now, we're gonna do these standing. You do these seated as well, but let's assume all the benches are taken in the gym, man. What are you gonna do? Stand. There's always room for lateral raises. Since we already did incline press, we're doing the full upper body. We're gonna go straight to lateral raises. I see military press almost as redundant on this thing, almost. Not quite, but who has like 10 hours of training, right? So anyway, what I like to do, I like to come right in here, slight bend in the arms, bring it up, tilt the pinkies a little bit at the top. You can do six to 12 reps, slow and controlled, especially on the way down. You can either have your elbows bent a little bit or straight. Either way, you're still gonna be working that dough for it. Yep, and remember, the more you bend your elbows, the better leverage you have. What are you getting going? Oh. Uh, and you lighten the weight up. Yeah, but if you want to get on a couple extra reps, I'm not going to be mad at you. Just don't do all 12 reps like that. All right, so chest, delts, they're in the bag. We put it in the bag. Oh, oh. It's time to build some width. Yeah, now it's time to get some back. So what is the move we do for back? What is that compound move? It's called a row. And what we're going to do now is we're going to set up for the row. Now, you want to get a nice footing. I'd say about shoulder width apart, you'd say. Either show with or maybe slightly wider. Yeah, just a good base so you don't tumble over. Exactly. 
Okay, so you want to come here. I like wrapping no matter what. I like my focus on my back. If you're an anti-strap person, that's fine. I like get about a shoulder width grip. And you can either use a false grip, like Monk is. You go ahead and wrap the thumb. Either way, it's personal preference. Yeah, that's why I use straps. I personally like keeping my thumb out. So you're going to come here, nice and bent over, slight bend in your knees. See how I'm kind of 90 degrees? My back's not rounded though. Nice and straight. Pull it up. Slow, controlled, pulling right to his belly button. See, too often people are jerking almost to the chest, and they're jerking. Slow control that's going to get the most light activation, just like that right there. Next up, we got pull downs. We're using a neutral grip. You can do wide grip. You can do narrow grip. You can use overhand, backhand. It doesn't matter. What does matter is if you slow control, nice arch in the back. The arch in the back is going to activate those lats. Too often you see people pulling the weight down the front of them instead of pulling it down to the chest like Mark Stimitri right here. The key with lat pull downs, if he means too far back, it's not a pull down anymore. It's more of a weird row. If he's too straight forward, he's going to hit himself in the face. That's why you need this nice arch in the back. Look at that. That's perfect. See that activation right there. And again, the, the grips can't be all through close grip, wide grip, or neutral grip. They all target slightly different areas of the back, but at the end of the day, you're hitting laps, bro. You're hitting laps. Rear delt row. This is one exercise, even though we're doing six to 12 reps for everything else, I'm doing 12 to 15 because you do not want to go heavy on these. I'm not a fan of going heavy on these, very precarious position. Notice how he's completely bent over, no round in the back, 90 degree angle, really targeting these. I mean, you could see through the shirt. You see his rear delts popping out. That's exactly what we want in this movement. So for what I do, I come here and I actually grip it with this. But either way works. As long as you're bringing your arm back, you're getting your rear delts. Whatever's more comfortable for your structure. Okay, you're gonna come here, nice bend. And don't try to look at yourself while doing it either. No, keep your head up the floor. You want your spine nice and straight. Preacher curl. We're gonna do six to 12 reps on this. You can do this on a hammer strength machine or any kind of preacher curl machine or free weight. Obviously, we like free weights because, well, it's free. We like to be free. We like freedom. It's America. All right, so he's getting his set. Look at that nice contraction. Now, you see a lot of people will stop right there. No, 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 no. We want full range of motion. We want to start from the bottom and come to the top. But you don't want to come so far up you lose contraction. So look how constant contraction throughout the movement. That's what you're going for on these preacher curls. Now, for me, I'm short. And the seat just doesn't work for me. So I actually like to get in here, get a nice base, lean over, and have a nice firm base and do a standing preacher curl. So I'm going to grab it here, wider grip. The wider you grip it, the more inner bicep you work, the closer you grip it, the more outer. At the end of the day, just curl the bar up, and I think you'll be okay. Do what feels more comfortable for you. What's great about the preacher curl is it's going to keep you more static. The one tricep movement we have today in our entire upper body program is going to be the tricep press down. It's an isolation movement, which is just going to isolate your triceps. Now the key is you don't want to herk and jerk, and you don't want to overdo range of motion. You don't want to underdo it. You're looking at a nice 90 degree angle, keep your elbows nice and tucked into the body, keep your body nice and straight. Now the reason I like this machine, it's not way out here. So what we're going to do is, for those of you ever played football, remember the ready stance if you're a linebacker? I like getting in the ready stance. You come here, bring it in. There's your set. There's your top of your movement. Bring it down. Boom. See so, you how some machines, the, the ropes come out really far. And see how I'm flaring the rope out at the bottom real quick? That's what you want to do. Get a nice contraction. And this is one you can lock out. Feel free to lock out and get a nice flex at the end. See so, you now he has perfect form because he's admiring his arm at the same time he's doing the rep, which is absolutely key. Day two right there. We've done legs. We've done full upper body. You've done your whole body in two days. Your whole body. Well, what comes next, man? Day off. It's very important that you give yourself time to rest. Your muscle actually grows while it's recovering, not while you're working it. You want to give each body part you get 72 hours to heal before training again. We trained legs yesterday. We trained upper body today. We're going to take off tomorrow. Then we're going to train legs again day after tomorrow. That's what gives us that 72 hour window that we want to give our body time to heal and recover. Scientifically speaking, you, go, you want to get that frequency two times a week. Yes, sir. And guess what? We're doing that. We're doing only four days. This is an optimal program for anyone looking to maximize their time in the gym.